Father, the Holy Spirit, Amen. Our Father in heaven, holy be your name, your kingdom come. Your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our trespasses. As we forgive those who trespass against us, lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. Father, we place into your hands all that we are discussing. We offer, we offer you and we pray that your spirit may lead and guide us uh, in this endeavor of us learning more about you and living uh, living new. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for your spirit of grace in our life and the spirit of truth in our life, Lord. Continue to strengthen us in your grace and continue to help us to know your voice in all the situations of our life and enable us to follow your voice. I pray for uh, Manipur, especially for Manipur, I pray that heavens will open. About Manipur, I pray that there will be a powerful outpouring of the Holy Spirit and fire on Manipur, Lord. Lord, I pray that your peace will be restored in that nation. Touch the hearts of people with bitterness, revenge, sadness, hurt, fear, Lord. Have mercy on each one of them. I pray for all the trouble, troublemakers. Grant everyone the grace of conversion. I pray for all those joining in the Zoom, Lord. Fill everybody with your Holy Spirit. Grant everyone the grace to have fellowship with you. And I also pray for all of those who are watching to the YouTube, Lord. Let there be a powerful outpouring of your Spirit upon them. In Jesus' name. So we'll all pray together. Heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus. Heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus. Everybody, <laughs> Heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus. Heavenly Father, in the name, Heavenly Father, in the name, Father, in the name of Jesus. Cover us with the blood of your Son. Cover us, Cover us with, with the blood of your Son. Heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus. Heavenly, Heavenly Father, Father, in the name, in the name of, Jesus. of Jesus. Build a wall of fire around us. Build a wall of fire, fire around us. Around us. Heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus. Heavenly Father, Heavenly Father, Heavenly Father in, the in the name of Jesus. Let your angels encamp around us a day and night. Let your angels, Let your angels, angels encamp around, around us day and night. Holy Spirit, we welcome you. Holy, Holy Spirit, Spirit, we welcome, Spirit you. we welcome you. Guide us and lead us. Guide us and lead us. Guide us, guide us and, and lead us. us. In Jesus' name. In Jesus, in, Jesus in Jesus' name. name. So we have been learning about uh, about the spirit of grace, and yesterday we saw many quotations about grace. Anybody can share any quotation which you like. You might have read earlier also, and yesterday you heard some of them. Any any quotation conducted with grace. Any, yeah. Anybody can share in this lot, there are a lot of scriptures of the, where the word grace is used, and some are powerful, some are wonderful, and some of us can relate to each one of them, or maybe some of them. Can you share anyone? The one at the beginning of the Mass, may, may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, love of the Heaven Father, the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you. I think it's from Corinthians. I don't remember the quotation. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So that, that that's the quotation of about grace you love. Yes, yes, that's some um, something which I hear every day, and that has kind of gone into me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hearing is okay. Yeah, but uh, yeah, okay. Then any anybody else? Anything? Like there is a scripture which says, "My grace is sufficient for you." My grace is so, so for many people. This particular verse is very popular. I, I've seen a lot of people telling, especially a lot of malaise telling. You know, I've seen many people. Oh, God's grace is sufficient for me. That's what I have learned. So, any, 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 anybody else want to share any word about grace which you have read earlier or yesterday you have heard? If you want, you can share and say this particular scripture I like. You now, the other one which we read is this that uh, uh, the, the, the law came from Moses, but truth and grace comes from our Lord Jesus Christ. Grace upon grace comes to us from Jesus Christ. Anybody? Okay, let's read Zechariah chapter 4. Any, any, anybody is saying anything? Okay. Zechariah chapter 4, verse 7. In, a, in an unexpected place, you find grace. In Zechariah, in the chapter of Zechariah, there are two places where you can see the word grace. Second chapter 4, verses 7. Thus says the Lord of hosts, if you will walk in my ways 
and keep my requirements, then you shall rule my house and have charge of my courts, and I will give you the right of access among yes, those. Yes, Zechariah chapter are... four, verses seven. Yes, well, that's what I'm reading. Yeah, Zechariah, Zechariah four seven. Oh, sorry, no, sorry, guys, that is three seven. Sorry. Yeah, the oh, word which I read is very good. Okay, the one which mm -hmm. we have read that earlier. Okay. Ahab will become a pillar in the house of God and walk in the midst of the temple of God. Yes. We are all invited. And that there were how, how it should be done. It's already mentioned there. If the verse, just read the verse which you are read by mistake. Just now. The one yeah. three seven. Three seven is yeah. uh, yes, thus says the Lord of Holes, if you will walk in my ways and keep my requirements. Then you shall rule my house and have charge of my courts, and I will give you the right of access among those who are standing here. So in the presence of God, there are many standing, and the Lord is saying that he will give access to us if we will meet his requirements. So we are all invited to become part of that temple of God. And God says, I make you like a pillar in the temple of my God. So this is the beautiful scripture. We should not forget that. Now it's always good to memorize scriptures. How many of you all do? Yes, brother. I do that. Yes. Brother Jude, any anybody else? You know, our, our brain has a lot of capacity capacity to remember, you know. I so do. what you all have to do, each one, yeah, each one of us, what we need to do, try to memorize one scripture at least one day, or at least one scripture every two days. Yes, it has already come up. Uh, Anjana has put it up. Yes. This is a beautiful scripture, 3 7, which you should memorize. Just imagine yeah, the Lord yeah. says, in the, yeah, I, You will walk in the midst of those who are standing in His presence. Now, who is standing in His presence? Prophet Moses, Prophet Elijah, Prophet Abraham, Mother Mary, so many of the saints. So many of the say among them you walk. So try to see the memorizing scripture is very powerful and it brings a lot of changes in our brain, you know, a lot of changes in our way of thinking. How, how many of you have memorized at least five scriptures? I have, I have done. Gita how many? We have done. How many? I have done. How many? Five. Five, five or more. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, uh, everybody can. Brother Jude also can. I also can. You know, we all can memorize scriptures. And you know, the more you memorize scriptures, the more it will sink in you. More it will sink in you. I remember Brother Jude was mentioning about somebody who had memorized some seven hundred scripture verses. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Not, not memorized. He says he declares those seven hundred verses every day. Every day, okay. Every That's day, great. every day. He before uh, he steps out uh, into his day day to day activities, he declares these seven hundred words verses. Uh, you know, and uh, then only he steps out. Yeah, yeah. From memory or reading it? Uh, I think it's mem both. I think uh, it is. Uh, so he had a vision. Uh, God has given him to help. He had shown, the God has shown him hell. That is how he became popular. You know, it is there on the YouTube. Um, he became popular by uh, sharing his testimony of God, taking him to uh, hell. So it's, it happened around early morning, three o'clock. He thought he's dead, you know, and he God took him to hell. And then, uh, you know, it, I think it was an out of body experience uh, or a vision. I don't remember. But then uh, he explained this to people that hell is real. Uh, so that is then he was in an interview he shared this you know, and he some 70 plus but he looks well like uh, you know 30 40 years that young fellow he looks very young so the, the interviewer asked him what is your daily schedule so then he was saying you know i early morning i get up and i don't step out without uh, you know uh, saying this 700 verses uh, 
uh, which I do it every day. So, so actually, quoting seven hundred verses will take, I think, uh, uh, more than one to two hours. Yeah, yeah, it it, it would it would uh, definitely. I think it will take more than uh, two hours. I think. Yeah. So sure, yeah, yeah. That, that, that's a beautiful experience. I think every day when he keeps on saying, uh, he it will be also getting memorized. You know. So right. we, we all have to see the capacity of brain is already there. Don't think that you cannot. If you just keep uh, reading the one particular verse every day, 10, 15 times for a few days, it will register. So, so, so the word of God stored in us is like a sword of the spirit, you know. We can bring it into our mind whenever we need it. And it can come out of our mouth. Let the word of God richly dwell in you. So there we and this the words on grace. Something that we each one of us have memorized it. Each one. See the, the, the all the words about grace we should memorize one by one, and then, and that will leave a great effect in us. Keep us level minded. Keep us focused on God, and keep keep us leaning on to God. And so many wonderful things will happen. Zechariah chapter four, verses uh, verses seven. Yes. Yes, ma'am. I've located it. Seven. What are you, O great mountain? Before Zerubbabel, you shall become a plain, and he shall bring out the top stone amid shouts of Grace, grace to it. Yeah. Uh, what are your great mountain before Zerubbabel? You shall become a plain, and he and he shall bring out the top stone amid shouts of grace, grace to it. So many obstructions then go out of our life when we say grace, grace, grace. When we say grace, grace, grace. And we know the Bible tells us that grace upon grace is given to us so that we can have dominion in life. So in the same way, we can say grace, grace, grace. And if we keep on saying grace, 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 a lot of breakthrough will take place in our life. A lot of mountains that are that are hindering us. You know, some mountains are like eternal mountains, you know. They say that we will not move. And they keep standing in front of us. But when we say grace, 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 it will, it will break, you know. So we all have to learn this to say grace, grace, grace. The reason why God's Spirit is working in our life is to release abundance of grace in us. As a child of God, as a son of God, you know, as a children of God, he, he, the Holy Spirit desires to release a lot of grace in us. And when we are in we are have the we have the abundance of grace, our, our walking, our standing, our moving around will be all different. We'll walk like a king's child. We'll walk like a king's daughter. We'll walk like king's son. Resting in the Lord, knowing that you have victory over all the power of the enemy. And there is a warning here, Hebrew chapter 13, verses 9. Hebrews 13. Yes, Do not be carried away by all kinds of strange teachings, for it is well for the heart to be strengthened by grace, yeah. not by regulations about food, yeah. which have not benefited those who observe them. Yeah. Do, not, do not be carried away by all kinds of strange teachings, for it is well for the heart to be strengthened by grace. So, so our heart should be strengthened by grace. So we should not be what carried away by strange teachings. The fact, the fact that we are part of the New Testament church, we are part of the New Testament is this, that we, we are walking in grace, we are standing in grace. And, and we are strengthened by grace. Do not be carried away by all kinds of strange teachings. Remember that we are standing by grace and moving by grace and God's favor is upon our life and grace upon grace is poured into upon our life. God bestows his grace abundantly 
upon us. As a child of God, by the Holy Spirit, God's grace comes into our life very powerfully, unfavored. We are, we, 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 it's a favor given to us. It is a favor given to us. We may not merit it, but it is given to us. You know, what merit do we have to receive the body and blood of Christ? It is by grace. What merits do we have to receive the Holy Spirit? It is by grace. What merits do we have to have fellowship with the Holy Spirit? It is by grace. So keep ourselves focused on this, that it is by grace that we stand. And it is by grace that we move. To um, 2 Peter chapter 1, verses 2. So let us not be moved by strange teachings, for it is well for the heart to be strengthened by grace. Two Peter one. Yeah, yeah. Two Peter, Peter one, chapter two. one. Two. May verses grace two. and peace. Verses two. Uh, may grace and peace be yours in abundance in the knowledge of God and of Jesus our Lord. Yeah. So now here's the secret. May grace and peace be yours in abundance in the knowledge of God and of Jesus our Lord. So when you come into the knowledge of God and Jesus our Lord, abundance of grace comes into us. What happens when you stand under a shower? You keep it open, what happens? What will happen when you are under the shower? The water keeps flowing upon us. So in the same way, when you stand in the shadow of the Almighty and you come to more knowledge of Him, and of the Lord Jesus Christ, a lot of grace will come into our life. And that is why we are frequenting the sacraments again and again. It is not something to hold on to some tradition. It is not something to hold on to some system. But in order that we, grace upon grace can come into our life. I remember one mother-in-law was going for the Holy Mass, you know. And she told the daughter-in-law, she had some fight with the daughter-in-law and the bell rang in the church. And she told the daughter-in-law, uh, I'm going to the church to attend the Holy Mass. After I come back, then I will see. That is not the purpose. The purpose is that we move from grace to grace. Grace upon grace. The reason we go for confession, the reason why we go for receiving the Holy Communion, the reason why we read the Word of God, Mm. To receive grace upon grace upon our life. In fact, uh, the wisdom... a divine, divine favor upon our life. Mm. Wisdom... So when you come to the knowledge of God and our Lord Jesus Christ, His grace will flow into us. It's like you know somebody putting a beam of light on us. Yeah. We we come we fill with lot of grace. Yes, brother. No, wisdom six uh, ten says you know six eleven. Wisdom six eleven says, yeah. therefore set your desire on my words. Long for them, yeah, yeah. and you will be instructed. Yeah, yeah. You will be filled with wisdom. So this knowledge yeah, yeah. Wisdom, uh, is uh, one one way of uh, getting. Uh, this is when you really desire uh, this word of God. We were discussing, you know, just now about the word of God. No, so longing to longing uh, to have the word of God. The desire in you to have the you know to read the word to live the word that will fill you with the wisdom of God. You know, uh, so that is a very powerful uh, thing which I thought because so many a times, uh, you know, or, or sometimes we don't have the desire to <laughs> word of God. No, so that desire is also that very desire to read the word that can that itself will fill us with the wisdom of God. That grace yeah. of God. So not having the desire to read the word of God is something that you have to evaluate. Why you do not have the desire to read the word of God? That is something yeah. that we have to look into it. Not simply that. Uh, Oh, I don't have, I don't get the desire to read the word of God. It's not an, uh, a proper answer. Sometimes we don't desire to go to the doctor, but then we, have, we go to the doctor because the Bible says that sick needs a doctor. So why I'm not desiring to read the word of God is something that you need to ask the Holy Spirit. And then the Holy Spirit says, so more of the world comes into you, more or less you like to get into the word. And devil hates 
when you read the word of God. Devil hates when you read the word. That's why he makes you forget about reading the word of God. The more the word comes in you, more or less control he has over your life. So not having a desire itself, we need to check why. You know, some family tree, some families and all, they have burned Bibles in the Catholic Church, Catholic families and all, they have burned the Bible. And because of that, many of the members of the family are not able to read the word of God, not able to understand the word of God. I know one example of my own relation. One of my, one of one, 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 uh, one auntie who is married to one of my uncle. She she does everything. She goes to the mass, reads, prays the rosary. She will receive messages. Everything she will do. But when it comes to Bible reading, struggle. Then later on, my uncle only told that in the past generation and all, they have, they have burned the Bible. So we have, we have to always look why we do not have the desire of reading. We should be. If you are not hungry, what do you do? So I am not hungry for one day, two day, five day. You don't still live it, no? We really search our heart. Why Why I'm not hungry? Is it because of sickness? Is it because of some reason? We find, we search. In the same way, regarding the word of God, if you're not having desire, you know, you have to find out whether any sin has come into you, that is keeping you from the world. Is some holiness has come into you, that is keeping you from the world. Is it something that, uh, um, something that is happening where you're allowed Satan to work in a life where he steals the word that comes into you? What can be the reason? We need all of us has to search. So come, coming to the knowledge of God and the Lord, the Lord Jesus Christ will fill us with the abundance of grace. So the difference between Christianity and other all religion is this. A grace upon grace is poured into our life. So that is where we, we, we are different and we are powerful. 2 Corinthians chapter 13 verses 13 with uh, which uh, brother uh, Jude had uh, said, he said he has heard it many times. To Corinthians 13 The grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with all of you. The grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with all of you. So this is a scripture which the church has been praying over us in thousands of years, two thousand years, when the benediction is given and the starting of the Mass in the Sura Malbar Mass two times. So many times we have said again and again, we say this, we have heard it many times, you know. The grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with all of you. Yesterday and yesterday we read that God is called as the God of grace. And the Holy Spirit is known as the Spirit of grace. And here you see, the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ be with you. So grace comes from Jesus Christ. And it comes from him. The law came from Moses, but grace comes from our Lord Jesus Christ. Grace upon grace upon our life. So that whether we are sick, whether we are poor, whether we are not educated, what or caste we belong to, these things don't matter. When grace comes, things change. We are elevated to a different position because of the love of God for each one of us. We are elevated to a different position of sonship or kingship. We are elevated. See, the book of Revelation says, <laughs> Revelation chapter 1, verses 5 and 6. And from Jesus Christ, the faithful witness the firstborn of the dead and the ruler of the kings of the earth, to him who loves us and freed us from our sins by his blood and made us to be a kingdom, priests serving his God and Father, to him be glory and dominion forever and ever. Amen. Yeah, and from Jesus Christ, the faithful witness, the firstborn of the dead and the ruler of the kings of the earth, 
to him who loves us and freed us from our sins by his blood and made us to be a kingdom free serving his god and father to him be glory and dominion forever and ever what are we made to we are made to be a kingdom and we are made to be a priest serving his god and father so that is what grace does grace makes us into a kingdom makes us a kingdom you know and makes us priest serving god even the teaching of the catholic church it is said to baptism in general terms we are priests of god so that is what grace does but that is what i, I remember one of one one girl in our prayer group who had to get married and she was very poor you know and they had, they had no money no gold nothing you know and when the time of marriage came surprisingly uh, she was actually a dark girl and um, somehow she was looking very weakly you know, very weakly and um, Uh, and uh, she she will look very tired and all but you know as the marriage proposal came and as we kept, we kept moving forward i found something different in her the god's favor was upon her she started changing you know her structure changed the way she looked she changed a little color changed and you know a lot of beautiful things are happening in her that is grace god's favor not something that she earned god gave and then what happened people started coming forward providing gold providing almira providing this that so many things for her marriage and that is what has happened to us each one of us we did not merit it but god loved us so much that he made us a kingdom and made us a priest to serve his god made us a temple of the holy spirit made us a holy nation made us a royal priesthood out of out of his love towards us he gave us the grace and elevated us to that position to that position as a child of god as a child of god he elevated us not because we merited it he did not made us servants of god because he merited it because he, he by his call by his gift he lifted us up and gave us the grace to be known as a child of god to be known as a servant of god to be known as a champion of god as a leader from god that is what grace does so keep it all this in mind memorize the scriptures allow the holy spirit of grace to work in you there are two things that opposes grace in our life what are they i had shared yesterday there are two things that opposes grace in our life what are they root of bitterness sir yeah one is bitterness root of bitterness see to it that the root of bitterness don't spring up that's what the bible says so the root of bitterness can spring up and prevent the grace of god to work in our life then the second unforgiveness that's what she he said no root of bitterness is unforgiveness no you have to think what is the root of uh, bitterness is what is that it is not forgiving not that you don't have problem you all have problems the the pope francis has a lot of problem he said i i was reading so many things against me and immediately i closed that paper he said so he also is going through the same situation like we all go frequently so root of bitterness is unforgiveness so not uh, not forgiving having the root of bitterness inside to prevent the grace of god to come into our life and to grow in our life and what was the second thing that i had said hello anybody anybody any anybody what 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 is the second thing i had said that prevents the grace of god come into our life pride brother yeah pride 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 becomes a hindrance in us you know the lord revealed that the only spirit that stands very strong and boldly in my presence is the spirit of pride so that's the bible says god opposes the pride but gives grace to the humble now why mother mary was full of grace 
because of humility because of humility and because you are humble the devil will be afraid of you i remember when uh, the i think a uh, little flower you know a uh, little flower was saw one dream i think and as she was walking around the demonic spirits ran and they were hiding seeing her why why they should be afraid of her she doesn't have a ministry as we have she never had and when the sorts they 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 ran to hiding you know? they ran off and hid themselves and they told among themselves they are afraid of her because of her humility she is very humble so the reason as brother jude said about demon being afraid of mother mary is not because any other reason because of that humility that she carries because of that there is a full of grace that is maintained in her life and that is ever increasing you know i i, I remember i remember i i always wanted to make you know read that and show you all one seer a mystic from united states i think she was shown the throne of god the father the son and the holy spirit she was thrown the shown the throne of god and she was shown mother mary also and according to the vision that she saw there is a bend in mother mary's neck there is a bend like this so that is the humility that she carries that is the humility she carries so grace is ready for us we are called to be strengthened by grace to move with grace and grace upon grace will be poured out upon us for pride bitterness these two things we have to keep away so that the grace will continue to flow in us and will fulfill what god has planned for us now we will look into another title of the holy spirit anybody got any question here regarding grace we read about throne of grace we read about god of grace we read about the spirit of grace and we read about that grace comes from our lord jesus christ so grace is like oil in you know, oil put in the missions in the joints so the joints can move mission can move through what you call very smoothly you know oils are put in the various joints any anybody got any questions here so i i like to challenge you all to study these scriptures memorize it and live in grace more more you understand the grace of god for your life more you'll be able to love god the more you understand the grace of god for your life more little will become in the presence of god and in the presence of others and the reason many times you forget this and we become big friend of others is because you forget the grace that god has given us so next uh, title we are looking into is the spirit of burning the holy spirit is known as the spirit of burning so the holy spirit is known is as a title called spirit of burning now what is spirit of burning holy spirit keeps on burning like a fire now bible says god is a all consuming fire you have read that in the scriptures or should i take the scriptures god is a god of consuming fire and the bible says his throne is like a fire and his eyes are like fire from his mouth comes a double edged sword and from it through throne comes lightnings thunder peals of thunder so that is how god is now what do you think about the holy spirit he is a spirit of burning that keeps on burning in us and the reason why we have not felt that burning what can be the reason 
Well, what can be the reason that why we don't feel the burning of the Holy Spirit within us? As the prophets of old, as men and women who walked with God felt, why we do not feel the burning within us? The reason is very simple. The reason is because we are wishing to be a disciple of God, but not desiring and wanting to be a disciple of God, not being a disciple of God. When you become a disciple of God and walk and learn to put God first in your life, in all things, and get yourself disciplined by the word of God, you will find the spirit of burning working in you. The reason why we miss this part is because the spirit of burning is because we are not walking close to God. As you learn to desire to walk, become a God chaser and God catcher and want to have a desire to catch God and to chase God, you, you will find that powerfully the spirit of burning will function in us. We will look into Zechariah chapter 4, sorry, uh, Isaiah chapter 4 verses verses 5. Many times people say, I wish. Wishing is of no use until you put into action. How are you wishing? How are you going to make that happen? That is important. Just wishing, I wish, I wish, will not, will not bring, that, uh, bring that victory in your life. You have to put it into practice, put it into the plan. How I make this wish? I want to experience the fire of God. So what should I do? I should try to walk closer to him. Die daily, follow his inspiration, follow his grace, and walk closer to him that I can feel that flame in my life. So let's read about the spirit of burning, chapter 5. Chapter Isaiah chapter. Isaiah chapter 4, verses 5. Verse 5. That the Lord will create over the whole site of Mount Zion and over its places of assembly a cloud by day and smoke and the shining of a flaming fire by night. Indeed, over all the glory there will be a canopy. So verses 4, did you read, brother? 4, I didn't read. Them. Yeah. Five, four. I did. four. Once the Lord has washed away the filth of the daughters of Zion and cleansed the blood stains of Jerusalem from its midst by a spirit of judgment and by a spirit of burning. Yeah. Once the Lord has washed away the filth of the daughters of Zion and cleansed the blood stains of Jerusalem, from its mist by a spirit of judgment and by a spirit of burning. So now you understand why you need the spirit of burning? You need a spirit of burning to wash away the filth that is in our life. And until you experience that uh, the spirit of burning in our life, all this filth that is within us will never get burnt out. So that is why the Holy Spirit is called the spirit of sanctification. So when he convicts us of our sins, He's leading us to the spirit of burning. Maybe the next stage or the next stage, it will be the burning. But what happens to us is, many times we are convicted of our sins. We make a confession and then we walk in our own way. And that is why we are not experiencing the spirit of burning. So when the spirit of burning will burn in us, the filth, all the blood stains in our life will all get burnt out. Then the spirit of burning will start functioning in us. And you know, one beautiful thing about the spirit of burning is, you know, when the spirit of burning works in our life, it will not allow, when the spirit of burning is working in us, it will, it will not allow you to gossip about others. And why, why is it that we gossip so freely, so easily, without control? Why is it that we are provoked to gossip and still keep on gossiping? I remember one man who had died. He rose again in Africa after three, four days when many people prayed and he rose. And he was sharing that whenever people come to my house and speak the faults of others, I go to the bathroom and hide. Like Ramana said, no? I go to the bathroom and hide. Because when he died, that three, four days, he was taken up to heaven and he was shown hell, all those who are in hell. And, and he found many people whom he did not expect to be there also. So that, that, that is what the spirit of burning is. So when the spirit of burning is working in us, we cannot gossip. 
the holy spirit will not allow us to gossip we start feeling some kind of something holding us preventing us from speaking out these things are given to whom those who become disciples of christ a deeper disciples of christ and it's for all of us wishing will not do desiring and putting the plan into practice by like by spending time in prayer reading the word of god dying daily allowing the grace to work in our life then this with the burning will work in us jeremiah chapter 20 verses 9 one man who knew the fire who knew the spirit of burning in his life Jeremiah chapter twenty verses uh, verses. Now we'll say we'll speak the word and we'll end it here now. Yes, sir. If I say I will not mention him or speak any more in his name, then within me there is something like a burning fire set up in my bones. I am weary with holding it in, and I cannot, for I hear many whispering. Terror is all around. Denounce him. Let us denounce okay. him. Okay. If I say I will not mention him or speak any more in his name, then within me there is something like a burning fire. Within me there is something like a burning fire. Within me there is something like a burning fire. Within me there is something like a burning fire. What was happening when he made a decision not to speak? He started sensing a burning fire within him. This is the spirit of burning. This is the spirit of burning. This is the same spirit that came on the apostles on the day of Pentecost. Like like the tongues of fire, it appeared among them, and each on each came that fire. So the whole purpose of the spirit of burning is that we be sanctified and we be cleansed. so let us open our hearts and open our life to god who is merciful who has said in the word let us boldly go to the throne of grace so that we might receive help when we in the time of our need time of our need so let us turn to the lord let's allow god spirit to work in us let us be genuine let us be real Let us be real, no? We have to be real in the presence of God. And I remember once I went for confession; it left a powerful impact on me. I have confessed thousands of times. Sometimes weekly, two times, two times, three times also I've confessed. And people have misunderstood, and they have criticized me. And uh, behind me, they have told the soloist, the big sinner, is again going for confession this week. So that was how. <laughs> It's not their fault. They do not know. So it's not nothing. Uh, it's not. I, I don't blame them. I, I I don't blame them. Now people think you know just because you preach the word of God and you pray the intercession that means that uh, you never commit sin. So we, by grace we stand. You know, by grace we stand. So I remember thousands of times I have gone for confession, but once when I went for confession it was from my heart. It was like talking to the Father from the heart, and that brought a change. Now, did you understand the difference? Other times when we are mechanically give, give making a confession, and then when we are going for a confession from a heart, you can write on a paper; it doesn't matter. But when the confession is from a heart, where you talk to the priest about your sins, about your failings, that will bring change. Even though you mechanically say your sins are forgiven, but a change will come when it comes from a heart. So we'll pray. Anybody got any question? We'll learn about the spirit yeah. of the burning next I time. Was, yeah, we were just discussing about the word of God so many times, uh, saying etc. No, so one thing why? Pardon, 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 pardon. 
you were saying about the word of god the power of the word of god when we repeatedly say yeah uh, yeah yeah so one, so one of the things why this uh, hail mary prayer is very powerful because it is a word of god it is a word yeah, yeah. of you know which we are repeating which we don't realize it i mean many people don't have that awareness each time when a hail mary is uh, said it is the word which the angel gabriel said to mary addressing her and that is the yeah. power in which when we are releasing when when we are saying it is getting released so this yeah, is yeah. which uh, which uh, you know which is very powerful instrument against the devil so this repeat yeah. even if you don't remember any word also just uh, you know repeating hail mary can really you know uh, invoke the power of the lord uh, against uh, the forces that is attacking you yeah yeah uh, about the this bit yeah, actually about the rosary also we have to remember that uh, 53 times you are telling jesus 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 and uh, the word jesus was not there actually in the rosary it was added by a pope i don't remember his name uh, it was only said blessed are you among women and blessed is the womb the fruit of a womb that was the only but one of the pope added the word jesus 53 times people many times in the argument with protestants you know i have tried to make it clear to them that uh, you see uh, they say that rosary is a weapon of the devil and all these things they teach you say you know, it's like a, a magic wand that you are tying on your hands and your neck and all so i said he when you it cannot be of satan because 53 times you are saying the word jesus yeah oh i this is a very new information i didn't think that way but this is very powerful because jesus is there in every hail mary yeah, yeah. so 53 times and the and you know it's a revelation which jesus said when the name jesus is said in heaven all the angels all the beings everybody prostrate including mother mary including all the saints they prostrate at the name of jesus so it is impossible that it belong to satan when 53 times you are using the word jesus and when you look in when you say hail mary hail mary full of grace the lord is with you blessed are you among women and blessed is the fruit of thy womb jesus so when you say jesus we are we are putting an effort and a strength to say that word mm, yeah it cannot belong to satan <laughs> yeah, it cannot. Yeah, that, that, that is um, this thing we have to keep in mind, especially when we see in the workplace and in the study where they are working and studying neighborhood and all. We encounter a lot of people who will always counter this. You know, this thing we have to keep in mind. Thanks, thanks, brother. Jude was saying something. Jude. Ah, uh, yes, brother. Uh, I was reminded of when you were speaking about the spirit of learning. I was uh, reminded about the uh, the sharing by the two disciples. Uh, who Jesus met on the road to Emmaus. So after Jesus disappeared, they said, uh, "We're not our hearts burning within us while yeah. He was talking to us, or yeah. The Lord, yeah, yeah. while He was opening the Scriptures to us." That is Luke twenty-four. So if you want the Spirit of burning to work in our life, open our hearts, and you know it's good if you are sanctified. So on the day of judgment, you can stand in the presence of God. So let's all pray. and let's all pray that we will be filled with the holy spirit a fresh anointing and new anointing will be upon life and a spirit of burning will burn in us and don't waste the bible says do not waste the grace of god and some graces are given to us if we don't operate in it it is taken from you and given to somebody else it is given to somebody else so keep that all in mind you know graces are given freely if we don't operate in it don't use it don't keep it it is given to given away again to somebody else what will happen then you become empty hallelujah thank you lord shara bara bara shara bara bara hum hai ye shara bara hum hai god hallelujah hallelujah praise the lord 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 praise
So beware of spirit of lying. Lord is telling someone. You now the spirit of lying is a spirit that comes and remains in our tongue. And they come because of some tendency of telling lies again and again.
So Lord, Lord is healing our hearts, you know, some healing is taking place uh, deep within us. Any, any Anybody want to share anything? Want to share? I was reminded of uh, a rainbow and a verse where I read it, uh, the you know, outstretched arm of God. I don't know the verse where, but it reminded me when I was praying that. Yeah. So tomorrow I can tell you. I have read this. Actually, rainbow also is a symbol of the Holy Spirit. The actual rainbow is white, you know. It's actually from the white light, the rainbow comes. Mm -hmm. All the colors come from white. So God is pouring his mercy and light upon us. That's what Ramana got it. Lord. This, this word Lord. came to me. Seek the Lord at all times. So Lord is telling someone, don't be afraid. Sorry. Don't allow fear to rule your hearts. I met it on the scriptures. Think about the scriptures. Say the scripture. Drive it away in Jesus' name. There's so much of weapons are available. The blood and all. So many things. And beware of gossip. Is there anybody who gossip here? Hello? Is there anybody who gossip? Anybody who gossip, is it? Yeah, yeah. Little, little. <laughs> that is a very... That is a very... I know... Straightforward question that you're asking. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Little, 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 no? <laughs> little, little. Can somebody say that, you know? <laughs> Anybody's raising hands? I don't know about others, but I, I sometimes do. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Be, be, be aware of that little, little gossiping. It's a little bit problem. Others are all saints, I think. Yeah, little, little gossip is there. They are also somebody. smiling. <laughs> pa pardon, pardon? We are also laughing when you ask that question, you know. <laughs> Nobody will tell out, but yeah, we do that. You no, know? no, you, 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 you raise the hands. You raise the hand. You say, yes, I do. Yes, yes, yes. I sometimes do. So let us let the Holy Spirit teach us uh, that we need, we should not gossip and how not to gossip. And why not to gossip? Lot of damages have been caused by gossip. Okay, then so God bless everybody. Tomorrow is uh, tomorrow is uh, May 13th, and tomorrow is uh, tomorrow is the day that they're going to celebrate Amla's life. That is, we'll be celebrating this one year. Uh, I, I took place on uh, May 1st, but tomorrow is 13th, and tomorrow we'll be celebrating the Holy Mass, and we have invited few people. They all, we all be coming together, and we'll all be dressed in white, white shirt, white sari, and white chudida. So many asked me why. I said, see, there is, there is a feast in the heaven, the feast of the Lamb, and Bible says we'll be all wearing white. So let's see how we look. So yeah. all, the, all the 100, 120, 150 people will be in white okay. shirt, or white chudida, or sari. Tomorrow is also Fatima. Tomorrow is also the feast of Our Lady's appearance in Fatima, right? Yeah, and tomorrow I'll be releasing my book, Bringing Heaven Down to the Earth. Okay. This book I completed, 30-40% I completed when Amla was going under treatment and we were in the hospital. She was on one bed and I was in another bed and I, I worked on the book and I completed over 99.9% while we, I was going through that situation. Praise God. So yeah. Tomorrow I will be releasing that book. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. So many, many have asked him, many have put up a question, why you want to release on that day? You know? I just want to tell people that uh, we have to keep life going. Yes. We have to keep life going. That, that, is the, that is what I want to tell people, that we keep the life going. We yeah. keep going forward. That is, the, that is our aim. And the, uh, the priest was in Karmal Ram, Father Thomas. He will be celebrating the Mass tomorrow. Oh. When the church was uh, reconstructed, Father Thomas had uh, 
under his leadership it was okay so he will be releasing that book also so that is the that's what we desire okay so god bless everybody bless everybody see you all tomorrow bye bye yeah next time bye